Hello and good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, this lecture organized in the framework of the documentary photography series. Uh, today we have Alessandro Penzo, uh, a photographer who's been uh, working on migration and the refugees for a long time. He's a graduate in uh, psych uh, clinical psychology and in photojournalism. And um, uh, he's been awarded also a, uh, a prize at the Time magazine, like the best photo story of 2015. So uh, I leave it with Alessandro because I think he has very important and interesting uh, information for us about migration. So welcome, Alessandro Penzo. Hello. Thanks for everybody for coming here today. Thanks, Alessandra, for inviting me in the New York Academy. And uh, sorry for my English, for my Italian English, but maybe it could be fun. I hope so. I started to follow uh, the immigration and refugees topic in 2009. I was in different uh, country, and um, because uh, my point of view, I, I decided to to follow the story inside the Europe, especially in the corner, like a country like Malta, Greece, Italy, that are actually are the door where the people arrive after this period journey. Uh, but what was important for me to show to the people uh, during these years is to uh, try to sensibilize the people and uh, to be critical with the Europe because uh, um, a lot of people, a lot of refugees, uh, are forced to live in very, very bad condition uh, in Europe, uh, and uh, I think for uh, Europe's fault. But first of all, I want just to uh, give some uh, technical uh, information that are important for, uh, for understand my, my project. I was very critical against the Dublin regulation. I don't know if you know about it. It's uh, the reason, uh, from my point of view, why some people live in this condition in Europe. Because the, the Dublin say uh, that the people, when arrive in Europe, the first country where they arrive is the country where they need to upload for uh, status of refugees or for asylum seeker. Um, and after this country alone decide if this, these people can stay, can be refugees, and they need to provide. Uh, but in the past, it uh, happened that some country uh, decided to use this regulation uh, in discutable, uh, you know, they, they, they did some discutable choice, like in Greece. Uh, because in 2010, 2011, uh, Greece refused uh, like 99% of the request of the asylum. So you can image everybody. And uh, I did my first uh, uh, trip in Greece in uh, November 2011. And uh, what I found was uh, a country completely destroyed from a uh, crisis, a European crisis. They started the economic problem. The political <laughs> was a stable political uh, uh, situation. Uh, in, at the end, in May, uh, was election, and uh, migrants and the refugees was one of the topics during the election. And, uh, but what was a surprise to me was to find a lot, a lot unaccompanied minors. So uh, young people uh, travel alone and arrive in Greece and try to upload for asylum, and they, they've uh, waiting for a year without an answer. Because uh, uh, what is sure that in Europe, if you are underage, you have a protection. It's not important where, where you come from. So you have a protection. But this is not happening in Greece. So I decided to spend uh, um, like one year to document uh, this situation. In Greece, uh, at that time, the people tried to uh, cross from Turkey in the north, in the Evros, because it was a, um, a small uh, 
lamb of land where it was possible to cross by foot it was just seven kilometers and uh, but what's happened so the people uh, after they arrive in the, what for me was very um, surprise for me was to uh, find uh, these people risk their life for travel from one uh, European country to another European country. So this is, was the situation. People blocked for this regulation Dublin II, so they tried to upload. Uh, what I forgot to tell you about Dublin II, uh, what's happened, that if you arrive in Greece and you have a fingerprint in Greece because the police catch you and you try to upload for your asylum and blah, blah, blah. In the case you have the possibility to arrive in Germany, if G Germany can send you back in Greece, because say, okay, your fingerprint is in Greece, so you need to stay in Greece, because the Greece is the country, take care of you. This is the regulation. So what do they do? So they are not able to travel, they are not able to do where they, they want. They need to stay in Greece, but Greece don't give any offer. Greece don't give asylum. Without asylum, they can go to the school. Without asylum, they can work. So they are illegally. So they try, to continue their journey, in some, in some system I show you, like here, go in the port in the night, try to jump in some cargo ship, uh, go in Italy, and uh, the people uh, they live in uh, abandoned the train station. This is people just arrived from Turkey, this is in the north, the first uh, um, train station. Uh, because the people when arrive in Greece, sometimes they don't know about the situation, the political situation, especially before, especially years ago. So sometimes when they arrive, they are happy and they're waiting and say, okay, I'm waiting for a police because I'm a refugee, so I'm escaped uh, from Taliban, I'm escaped from uh, a lot of different situations and they want to ask for asylum. But very soon they understand that the situation is terrible in this country. So this is um, as mo um, three uh, boys from Afghanistan, 70 years uh, old, and the one 16, and they live in abandoned uh, uh, beach house, it's uh, correct, and uh, in Padras, because Padras is a port where a lot of cargo, a lot of ship uh, go in Italy, you know. They, they can try to, to jump inside illegally and arrive in Italy and after continue their journey. So they live in this situation, this is. This is two in uh, Padras, they have Azara. Azara is a um, Shia part of the Muslim. You know, the Muslim have these uh, two uh, big parts, uh, the, Sh the Shia and the Sunni. And the Shia in uh, Afghanistan uh, have a trouble with the uh, Taliban. They want to kill because they have a different religion. You know? And uh, this is an abandoned building in Padra. This, uh, um, when I started this work in Greece, also was during the Arab Revolt. So a lot of young people escape from North Africa uh, because they, they don't have a successful with Arab Spring and they have a sc uh, scared because they protest in the street. So they say, okay, I left my country. I don't have any fusion in my country. Nothing changed. So I tried to go in Europe. This is also was a um, Tunisia guy that lived in an abandoned factory in Athens. This is, was Columbia factory. It was very famous in 70 years, 60 years, because it was a, a vinyl factory. And now it's completely abandoned and uh, it's a shelter, it was a shelter for around 14 uh, refugees of different nations. This is two Columbia factory. This is uh, the building, a top, a top view from the building where uh, some uh, Afghanistan people uh, live. You can see the port, and this is another building where the people live. So this is the condition. You can imagine a teenager living in this condition in Europe, and they risk their life just for find a better life. So we can travel uh, with Ryanair from Greece to Europe or take a ferry boat, and need to try, they need to risk their life. How? This is in Padras, you know? These people, you see, a small group from 14 to 18, they try to enter inside the truck. You can see the hand, people try. Very dangerous. A lot of people uh, died in this way because it's dangerous because the, the driver, they don't stop, they have a fear because also they're going to have a problem because sometimes if the, the police found the people inside the, the truck, uh, uh, 
you know, they have investigation if they are smugglers, take money from these people, you know, if they are from mafia. And uh, these are people uh, in the wagon, Amanda. These people just uh, in, in the port where they live. This is abandoned house where people, um, 10 people lived there at that time. And it was a lucky because they have electricity compared to other people don't have nothing. This is a, you know, they, sometimes when they, they live uh, near the port, so when they saw some cargo coming, they try to understand if, where, where this cargo going after, you know, if it's Italian uh, company or Chinglin company, and after they decided in the night to try to get inside. This was a 60 years uh, old from Afghanistan, Azara. He was from uh, one year in, uh, in Greece. He came alone. And this is, was a very sad story. It was in Corinth in uh, February of 2012. This is, was a racist attack from uh, extreme right. We was in the, um, this abandoned factory in Corinth where around 40 people live in different uh, culture, different country. And uh, one day, three guys from uh, Greece coming and they start to fight. Uh, okay, what's happened? That they was 40 and they just was three. So they can reject the attack. And I saw this guy go to the car and say, you know, and say, okay, okay, it's finished. I go away, don't worry. But when, when he, um, he, he take the, the car, start to drive against in reverse, against us, and we was together, you know. And I was there with them, you know, and I ran. I ran in another side because it was a small wall, so I jump and I take this picture. But Mustafano was unlucky, he was beaten from the car. So I, um, I called the police, I called ambulance, and tried to make a denounce. But I learned uh, in this situation what's happened in Greece at that time, you know, was an unofficial story because it's, the case is still open. Uh, but after investigation uh, for what's happened, because I go to the police, I want to make uh, my denounce, I want to try to explain what's happened, and they don't want to take my denounce. So I'm waiting like six hours, seven hours. At the hand come the chef of the police and say, are you sure that you want to make this denounce? Are you sure? Why you want to make And he take me in part and say, please try to understand. We are in crisis. Uh, something too stupid happened. Because some people stole something in the supermarket. In, uh, sorry, not in supermarket, open market. And um, these people uh, call help, call some help actually for what, what I know was a golden down, that extreme right in Greece, for make justice. And I believe that it was this guy that lived there. But I sure that they don't was there because I was there from two days. I spent time with them two days, so no people was involved in this. And still I'm not sure if it's true story. So he say, please, don't make a denounce. And I told, no, you don't understand, I'm a journalist. And not only want to make the notes, but after, uh, after I spread the news, I have a picture. So you say, okay, make a notes. And they say that this, this guy also tried to kill me because I was a European citizen. So I believe that could be more uh, impact, you know, more, more important than notes. But what's happened that they write on my testimony that I just was a witness of a car accident. So, and the day after, this guy, the driver, go with the lawyer to the police station, because probably they advise. And after uh, all this year, the, the case is still not closed. So this is, was uh, the situation in Greece at that time. And, uh, and this is, was a part of the fault of the, from my point of view, was a part of the fault of the Dublin regulamentation because these people are forced to be, to be there. So sometimes I found Greek people told me, look, 
where the people live, this is an unachievable, uh, uh, the people live like beasts, it's not sure and blah, blah, blah. But they don't know that these people don't have any shoes because no people want to stay there. They every night, every time have a chance try to you know, reach Italy or reach France or another country in desperate way, in intolerable situation, you know. Which people want to live in this, this way? For this reason, I called this uh, part of my project, Immigration, just this part about uh, teenager, lost generation. Because I want to stimulate a discussion, you know, I want to talk about what do we expect of these people if during the best time of their life, they spend like this, you know, don't have a chance to go to the school, don't have a chance to, you know, have any, 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 any life. Uh, this is, a, I was invited to um, uh, this ritual. This is Ashura. It's typical from Shia part. So this is uh, one of the reasons why they have a persecution from Taliban in Afghanistan. This is uh, also an abandoned factory in Padra. They are cooking. You see on the wall uh, there is a uh, extraction there, you can see extraction of how you can uh, uh, get inside the truck, how you can open or when you can go down, there is information, you know, they spread for the people still uh, coming. This is another place where the people live. This is from the truck. This is, was uh, 70 uh, years old from Afghanistan. And I remember one, one day uh, he showed me a razor blade, and uh, this was in 2012, a razor blade, and told me, uh, you know, Ale, uh, you know why I travel with this? I say, no, I can, I can imagine, what, what do you do with this? And, and they say, the next time I can arrive in Italy, and they try to push me back, because this is what's happened. Sometimes they arrive in Italy, the police open the truck, found the people and say, okay, you need to stay for the regulamentation in Dublin, you need to back uh, in Greece, and they send back in Greece. So they say, the next time I start to cut my face, my head, and I hope they send me in the hospital, and at the hospital I found some people speak in English or speak Farsi, and they can explain my situation because they can't survive like this. And this is was a 70 years old from Afghanistan. This is two, uh, 16 years old from Afghanistan, take some water supply for the shelter. And this is guy waiting in the night in the, in the port, joking to, through the stone to the sea, waiting the night uh, for going to the port and try to have a chance to get inside. So, okay, this is another chapter. So, um, I published this work and uh, I was recognized uh, in England, in France, with some prize. But I, in my mind, I still have, you know, I say, okay, but I talk with everybody. Everybody understands the situation. Because sometimes, you know, the information, it's from the middle class. Not everybody have the chance. And uh, I feel very responsible uh, for uh, them and also for my country because um, in the last year, I saw the politics uh, try to manipulate this topic for get what, you know, for take the power, you know? It's a big topic, you know? Because you, they go on TV and they talk and the pure people, and they share the territory with these uh, migrants and refugees and the conditions are bad for everybody because of, of course the people living in Patras, they saw only the, the, the bad part. People run in the, the highway and, uh, you know, in the night and the police and uh, all the stuff. And I say, okay, what I can do? How can, um, how can I arrive everybody? How can I arrive specifically in the, in the part where, uh, um, where the people live? And, and also I want to talk with the politics. So I decide to organize a travel exhibition in a truck, because also the truck is symbolic, because it's the, the same uh, item that these people use for, uh, you know, uh, have a chance to have a better life. And thanks to the guys from Cortona on the Move that they helped me to fix all this stuff. 
we start this travel. And we start from Greece, and after we go to Brindisi, Ancona, because it's Italian port, so where the people try to come, and sometimes they push back. And after we continue to Rome and Florence, because Rome and Florence, it's like to be in all the, all the square of the world, because it's full of tourists and, uh, and Italian people, of course. And after we go to Milan, uh, Geneva, because there is UNSR um, base, UNICEF, all the important uh, organization. And after uh, Bruxelles, Strasbourg, because there is European Parliament. So the idea was to show the people live uh, in the place where the migrants are blocked or where the migrants are pushed back, and after to arrive to talk with the politics and try to explain which is the situation. And this is was the travel, you know? And this is was all the stop. This is some image of the truck with the exhibition inside. And the, the truck just parking in some square, no people would, was advised what was inside, you know? Just for stimulate a conversation. And I remember when I was uh, in Bari, it was uh, interesting because Bari, it's a poor Italian city, very beautiful city, but it's poor in the south. And there is a Cara, one of the centers where the Italy send migrants after they arrive in Italy, they need to stay, and some people are blocked there, and sometimes when the people are pushed back from another country for the Dublin regulation, they're back in Bari, because also there is a, a, the office, the asylum, a, the office for asylum, for the request, and all the stuff. So sometimes the people uh, finish to live in the street. So, the, you know, the people living in Bari have a bad feeling, you know, because they saw people uh, living in bad condition and then don't realize why. Because no people give the correct information. Of course, not everybody. So I remember it was this uh, younger, uh, 28, nice, smart, beautiful. And she came in the truck in the morning, saw the exhibition, and after she back, in the, in the afternoon, and looking for, for me. And say, I want to talk with the photographer, organize this project. I said, okay, nice to meet you. And, and she was very angry and told me, um, I saw your exhibition this morning. I start to me, I, I, and uh, I was sad. But after when I back home, I say, but it's not my fault if these people have problem, economic problem, or have a, a political problem in their country. What I can do? I have my problem. I don't have a job. I live in a very suburb area. I have a drug dealer under my house. I don't know how I can fix my future. And they say, yeah, I understand perfectly. No people judgment you, but um, what do you do for your future? which is your idea, how you want to fix your life. And she told me, I have a friend in England who works in an Italian restaurant, and uh, she helped me to, to find a job. So next week, I go in England, and I work in the Italian restaurant. They say, perfectly, these people want to do the same, but don't have a strong passport, so they can decide like you. And also, I have a question. You don't have a fear that after, when you arrive in England, England people say, another Italian guy come here to steal a job and, you know, uh, make noise in the street. And, she, and, and, uh, and uh, she say, I don't give any chance. And they say, no, this is not true because the racism is not what they do. It's prejudice. So if one people do something bad, you have a label, and it's finished for everybody. So the people start to, you know, and, and after we start to have a conversation, and they realized that she don't know nothing about uh, the European law about migration. Don't know nothing about Dublin too. So when she realized that some people was sent back from um, Sweden, it was surprising. So these people uh, spent four years in, uh, in uh, Norway or Sweden, and after they said, why? Said, because it's the, the, the law. And OK, show some video. This is uh, was Florence. I just passed 
here by chance. Oh, so I saw a big cameo, and then that's why I enter, and then so impressed, and I feel so so bad, and then I was thinking, too, I was watching this, and then I was thinking, what can I do for them? Each picture has a different feeling, but things in the inside is the same. All are different, and they all are beautiful. Impacto forte. Tipo, a me ha colpito tantissimo l'espressione della, uh, della foto del diciassettenne, quegli occhi proprio tristi. Ho subito pensato ad un confronto no? tra un giovane italiano no? ed un immigrato diciassettenne molto più invecchiato e gli occhi sono malinconici. Cioè, io vengo dal Messico, un paese di emigranti, e, insomma, è cercare di migliorare la propria situazione. Questa, questa è, è volontà e speranza che spesso si ritrova con realtà di tolleranza e di diffidenza piuttosto forti. Anche forza però, immigrazione e forza, atto di volontà. Do you understand? So anyway, was impression after to, to visit the, the, the camion, you know, to, to to think about what means to be migrants, you know, what means to be migrants, to be strong, to have a hopeness, you know, because you take care about your life, you want something to better for your life. And I don't think that we can judgment this choose. Everybody we want something to the best for us. But for some people it's more hard. So this was the first part of my job in Greece, when the situation was completely different, uh, probably for what you know, what's happened last year was the, uh, the year of the big number. You know, every, every magazine and uh, newspaper and uh, TV talked about what's happened in, uh, in Europe, it was this uh, so-called uh, refugees crisis. But because, <clears throat> happened that uh, the, 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 no was more any, any control in the border. For the people, it was more easy to enter inside the Europe. And also, for the first time, the Balkan route go down. Why? Because it was the Syrian war. And also, was some, uh, from my point of view, was very, very some bad decision from Europe and America too. Because, for example, uh, I don't know if you know, this summer uh, the food program was cut for the 50%. So all the people living in the camp, like in Turkey, in Jordan, in Lebanon, they have only one meal for a day in uh, one month, so in the summer. So some people decide, also the people not just will escape from Syria, also decide. So last year, around one million people arrived in Europe and 800 uh, in arrive in Greece. But 500 of these people arrived in Lesbos, this island that they document. This is, was just a, a dinghy boat arriving um, in the north coast of Lesbos Island. I don't know if you know Lesbos, is very near to the Turkish coast. And uh, this is, was a guy from Syria that uh, he traveled with a dinghy boat with another 40 or 50, 15 people. Uh, but during the travel, something started to go wrong. And uh, the engine stopped, and the water started to coming. And in the boat, there was also a child and pregnant woman. So the young people, the more strong, decide to swimming. But he don't have any life jacket. And probably, I think about for a thermal shock because it was summer, 30C degree, and maybe the, the water was a cold, and he don't eat nothing the night before to waiting to, to start uh, the journey for coming Greece and during the travel. So he arrived completely exhausted and it was, gone, was um, under shock. And I was the only oh. photographer there because no was uh, you know in in October when all all is changed after we go to 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 see, and um, and they asked me to help, and uh, we was lucky because I I have a number of organizations and some doctor so I call a doctor and the help uh, with the help of another Syrian we start to you know climb a hill because this is uh, was in an abandoned lighthouse. 
in a mountain with uh, some hills, so it was a uh, cost. And unfortunately, the doctor came uh, fast in, in half an hour with a jeep and uh, saved the life of this guy. So what's happened in Lesbos? Uh, in June, when the people start to coming, nobody was there to waiting. No police, no volunteers, no organization. Just the people arriving in, in the Lesbos, I don't know what, uh, what to do. And Lesbos is not a very small island, so usually the people arrive in the north, but for make a registration, for to be illegally in Greece and start all the process for asylum, uh, they need to go to the port where is the police officer. And it was um, around 50 kilometers. So they work after they arrive, they have to work alone. <laughs> this is a point. Uh, uh, work at, uh, they worked alone for uh, two days, because 50 kilometers in two days. You can imagine, with any water, 30 C degree in the, in the um, because it was summer. And, and this is uh, what we saw. This is a father that touched for the first time in Europe. So you can imagine to travel with 50 people in a dinghy boat that you are not sure where this dinghy boat coming because they buy from a smuggler. So you are not sure if you have enough of fuel. You are not sure if uh, it's everything it's okay if it's a new boat. To travel with your baby um, three months on the boat. So this is the face of the people when they just touch Europe, you know? She was from Kobani. I was very impressed with this woman because the first she did was to give a milk of the baby. The first one arrived because she she can she can't do during the journey, you know. So she was the, the first. This woman, uh, uh, 75 years old from uh, Iraq, uh, died on the on the journey probably for a uh, heart attack. It was in October. She was a volunteer from organization. and she was a doctor. The husband, the relative, and uh, this guy make a journey with them. And, uh, she, and the, you can imagine to travel with the body of your wife on the boat because it was a storm also. So the water started to come. I don't know, maybe she drink some salt water, have a heart attack, and die. She was from Afghanistan. This is, was um, the, the, the end of July, so when still uh, the, the, there was not so popular uh, news, not a lot of journalists, and there was a tourist, just they found that people arrived in the, in the coast. And this is uh, the place I told you before, you know, this abandoned house where the people arrive, and after they need to climb, to walk, kilometer and kilometer, alone, no people there. Here was in another moment. This was a big family from Kobane. And this guy have, has uh, autistic. And um, this is outside the Moira camp, what became a hot spot. I remember I was there for uh, Washington Post. And uh, we had the interview with the, the chief uh, officer that uh, you know, who, who worked in the camp, and they have some question. And arrived this guy with the cap during the interview, because they, they, at that time, and still now, the journalists are not allowed to enter inside. So the interview was outside, during, in front of the gate, under the sun. And during the interview, I, I saw arrived this guy, and he was very patient to waiting, you know, and they say, okay, let, let me understand what's happened, and ask, you, you want to ask something? You, you want to talk with the police officer? And say, yes. Say, we just arrived uh, from the north. Some people offer a passage, and, they, and we arrive here, and we go to the camp. We want to make a registration. We are from Kobane. We have some... Um, particular case because my brother have autistic so we can't work we don't have a water 
we have all the blue man, what we can do? And the police officer say, you make a registration in the port, it was uh, 11, 12 kilometers more far. Say, no, we just arrived, we don't know nothing, what we can do? Say, okay, you can enter without to, if you, before you don't go in the port, take your paper, and after you come here, I can give you any chance to enter inside, you, you, you can stay in the queue. And they say, okay, how can go to the, to, to the port? You, you need to work, and after you check the, the, the uh, clock, and say, ah, but now it's late, it's close the office, so you need to go tomorrow. And they say, where do we sleep? I don't know, it's your business. This is what's the situation, you know? He left, you know, wait, and they say, okay, let me go to check, because I can, uh, I can see. And when I saw all this family, you know, stay, uh, uh, try to, 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 to stay under the, the shadow, you know? They stood there because it's the only place was a shadow. And stay like this. And I can't, I don't know if you know about something about autistic, but they have a perception of the reality completely different. If sometimes so the autistic people, if you do like this, it's like a, a pain, incredible pain, you know? It's like a, if you slept. And so I was very ashamed to be Europe, you know, to European citizen. I can't believe that this happened in Europe. And, uh, in Greece, uh, where 20 kilometers more far was a tourist uh, make a windsurf of people enjoying the bar from every part of the world. So, fortunately, after I call one, uh, I call Doctor Without Border and I try to manage them and they, you know, they put in the clinic. And this is, was the wonderful system of uh, political. Uh, uh, the, 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 the wonderful system, uh, system of the um, um, asylum was the office. <laughs> this was a police, just give the paper, okay, Mohammed, uh, paper, and the people, you know, no people control if they arrive in the correct people or what's happened. And thanks to this paper, after they can buy a loan, pay with 50 euro, a ferry boat from Athens, because they need to pay the ticket, but they only can buy if they have a document. So after they go to the port, they can buy a ticket and they can go, they can left Lesbos finally. This was a shower for everybody. Man, woman, child, of course the woman don't go there to make a shower. And if I told you what is this, I don't, think you can believe me. What do you think is? What, what do you think happened? This is the queue for entering inside the camp. So the official queue for entering inside the camp. In, um, after uh, September, they, they start to arrive a lot of people, you know, like uh, 1,000, 2,000, some day arrive 5,000. But Europe don't decide to improve the, the system. So the people arrive in the camp and then as they start to make a queue and they finally they arrive in the holy tree, you know, they make a queue for three, four, five kilometers and they arrive like completely inside the, 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 the field of some farmer or, you, you know, but this is the queue for entering inside. Sorry if I loud, but it's, it's incredible, you know, I can't believe it. This is, was a couple, he have uh, 90 years uh, old, she have, uh, sorry, he have uh, 21 and he have 19. She was in pregnant for seven months and they are a couple from Afghanistan. They want to arrive in Germany and uh, grow up the child uh, far from uh, everything, to be sure. She was a baby from Afghanistan, two women from Afghanistan. And this is also outside the Moria camp. Now we know like a hot spot, where the pop go, where the pop went the, two, two, two days ago, three days ago. And this is, was another uh, story very sad because uh, it was three days of storm and the people who was in the queue are forced to stay in the, in the queue also during the storm. You know, don't have any tent, nothing for raining. So some uh, volunteer start to buy uh, bags for the garbage 
distribute uh, the refugees and the migrants so they can re repair. And I saw child uh, and woman fallen down after two days to stay forced in the queue. You can imagine a baby from 10 years stay two days like this under the rain before entering inside the camp. Because if they don't go inside the camp, they don't have the paper and they can go left. <coughs> they can left, left to Lesbos. And this is what's Europe, you know? This is a um, all life jacket, uh, um, which is the name, sorry, um, the garbage, uh, garbage place, uh, this carrier. Um, thousand, thousand all life jacket. This is uh, the queue during the storm. And I found this baby alone and accompanied the minors, uh, 16 years old, alone, forced to stay two days there, like this. It's a family from Afghanistan. It was very, very sweet people, amazing people. And this is the port. So after they get the people, they can stay in the camp, so they go out sleep in the street, uh, waiting to, to find a sp space in the boat to buy a ticket. This is one boat, right. This is another island. This is uh, Kos. Kos is uh, probably, you know, it's a very touristic place. Uh, a lot of young people go there. It's full of uh, bar and disco and blah, blah, blah. What is uh, different from Lesbos and Kos that uh, mm, a lot of economic migrants could, so what we call economic migrants, you know, people that don't came, um, we don't recognize that they came from a war like Syria or um, a political reason. You know? And these people usually are very poor, so don't have any money for pay a smuggler. And, uh, and what they do is to buy a loan, both like this, you, you, you can see, it's like for the baby, and without an engine, to come in Europe like this. So like eight, eight hour or depend from the weather, you know, but it's like eight hour of, uh, yeah. This is family from Afghanistan. In cost two, no was any camp. The government don't want to do nothing. Don't have money because it was in crisis. Europe don't take any position. So just a bank offer one uh, confiscate the hotel, and they say, okay, we have this, we can open, and the people can go there. But there wasn't any people to work inside the hotel to try to fix. Just a doctor without border go there and try to, you know, um, fix some situation like water uh, sanitation, uh, they put some tent, and they offer, uh, uh, you know, provide for medical care. And the, the name was Capitan Elias. That was the name of the hotel. This is also an accompaniment of my notes in the hotel. This is, um, when I was in Kos, uh, uh, was one moment, uh, you know, I started to ask me, okay, but not only strong people coming, you know? When you escape from a war, when you escape from persecution, every people escape from the country. So I decided to go to visit the hospital and see what's happened, you know? And they found this family, Kali family from Damascus, and they have a, a son uh, born with a serious, serious handicap. Uh, he, he, can't, he can't walk, he has a difficulty to, to speak, and also some another problem, a private problem. And uh, I ask uh, them, I say, how you arrive here? How can you move your, your son like this? And he told me, well, it was very hard, and the more difficult part was the boat, you know, the journey from, to arrive in the island. I say, why? Because we need a bed. We need a bed for our son. 
he can't stay sit down, we can't take him brass, so he need the bed, because also have some genetic problem in the bed, you know. Say, and how you fix? I say, we spend a lot of time to find the smuggler, offer to have a bed in the, in the dinghy boat, and the one we found, we say, okay, the bed occupy the space. So if we put bed, I don't have a space for another people. So if you want a bed, you need to pay double price for all the family. There was five. Uh, they have a daughter from uh, nine years, a son from 11, and uh, the husband, uh, so five people in total. So they pay around uh, 11500 dollars for each for move the, the, to arrive here. To arrive. This was in the capital, uh, Elias, so there was um, Afghanistan people around the hotel, I tried to find a space where I can stay, where I can sleep. This is what's inside the Captain Elias. It's very. This was a group of Syrian people arriving, cause, but they don't have idea. You know, they say, "Okay, we arrive. Now, what do we do?" Uh, police. Some people come to bring a house. Some people come to pick up us. What? What do we do? And say, "You need to go to the office." And they don't have any idea, so decide to burn a life jacket for you know. Call attention. This was inside cause. So what's happened? After the people arrive in Greece, how we told you, no people want to stay in Greece. They want to go in some place they can have uh, some chance. Or some people have some relatives in uh, Germany or especially Syrian people. Have maybe relatives have some restaurant or some people was before the war uh, move in Europe. So the only chance is to go Ill illegally, I mean alone by work, and they start to they move from Greece, they cross Macedonia, Serbia, Hungary, and after they arrive in Germany. After Hungary, 15 uh, of September, they decide to without any reason, apparently any reason, to building a wall and say, no, you can uh, cross from here. And no people want to stay in Hungary, but they just want to show that the people can enter in, uh, in uh, Hungary. So and after they, w they move in Croatia, and from Croatia again Hungary, and after it was political problem from Croatia to Hungary, so they start to go to Slovenia, and after Slovenia to cross the, uh, the wall, and after uh, Macedonia say, okay, if there is wall there, wall there, the people are blocked here, and then we put wall too. And so now the people are blocked again in front of the, um, the Macedonia. There is uh, actually, uh, at, at the moment, there is 12,000 people live there. And this is people in uh, Idomeni. Idomeni is the border from Greece and Macedonia. And uh, what's happened? So um, before, the, the Balkan route was all under control of smugglers. And it uh, was very hard to, to, to work there, like a photographer and journalist. Personally, I was arrested and uh, uh, kicked out from the country, from Macedonia country, for six months, just because I follow the Syrian people. And um, the only chance was to pay a smuggler. But when the, when the people start to come more, more and more, the mafia start to grow up and they start to kidnap people, rape women, kill people. So the Syrian people understood the lesson and they decided to, to stay more possible together, to collect more people and say, okay, now we don't, we don't pay any traffic, we follow our GPS, we, fo we follow our smartphone, and the 100 people, 150 people, we cross. So if some people come to us, we can defend. You know, and be, uh, before it was different. A small group, five people, six people, pay some smuggler, the smuggler showed the way. It was a different situation, you know. This is when together try to cross and say, okay, we go, we go. Because the, the, the big change uh, in the history of migration in Europe come from, from Syrian people. Because for the first time, 
Maybe also with Albania people happening something similar. But the first time Syrian people are going from the border and they stay together and protest, say, hey, we are refugees. You have the Geneva Convention. You say that you offer protection to refugees people. We are not tourists. We don't want to come in your country, Macedonia country and Serbia country, because we are tourists. We want to just cross because we are refugees, have some family in Germany, so let me cross, you know? And this was a big change in Europe. So because they push us to, to make a decision, to decide what we want to do. We, we are for human rights, or we are against these people. You know, it was a big fight from people decide to protest for their rights. This is, was a family from Afghanistan. He have um, a son with a brother with a, a, a Down syndrome. And uh, this is, was uh, in uh, Serbia. He was from Syria, waiting for the father go to, to check the border. It was everything okay. The police don't give problem. They can cross and. Uh, this was a uh, Hungary police uh, blocked a group of uh, people just crossed the border. This was in Croatia. In Croatia, in Croatia. Um, what's happened? Hungary, 15 September, crossed the border. So they move in Croatia. The Serbia also helped these people to move in Croatia. And, and Croatia tried to help these people uh, and uh, give some train, you know, for, for continuing the journey in the border, in Tovarnik, the first city in the, in the Serbia border. But what's happened that when it was only one train uh, for a day, and the, and, uh, the people was like 20,000 people. Because all the people was blocked and the people continued to come and also the people was scared that they don't have to lost the chance to arrive in Germany, that the politics change and uh, you know and also Croatia put the wall. And so all people start to run in Croatia. And was one moment arrived like at twenty thousand people. It was only trained for a day and just was only police try to you know, have a control. But what's happened that uh, when arrived the last two, three wagon, and the people understood that they don't have any chance to get inside the train, the situation became crazy. And you know, the people start to jump inside. And it was very sad to see sometimes uh, families separate, uh, uh, all um, was all lost control. This is, was in front of the border of uh, Hungary when uh, they closed the border and the people didn't know and the arrival was angry and tried to make a protest and uh, the, the Hungary police used tear gas and pepper spray for, uh, you know, kick out the people. This was uh, 11 people from uh, Syria. This is, was in Tovarnik during uh, the train story, and he believed to lost the family because he 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 go to to the volunteer to, to to take some food, and when he back, don't find the family, and he was scared and say, I lost my family, my family is in the train, I'm alone, but fortunately he just lost the sense of uh, orient the, the the position. He was a smuggler. This was in January in 2015. He was a smuggler that, you know, he stayed. Still there, like dressed like um, uh, refugees and migrants, and try, you know. And when the people try to cross, he stop and say, "Hey, if you want to go in Serbia, I know people can help you." This was an abandoned building, and this was all the dress uh, some refugees left because, you know, working during the rain. Or This is people uh, sleeping in front of the Hungary border when they close. So the family was like, what do we do now? They was very tired, you know, and they sleep there and try to wait. This is woman uh, crying in front of the border because they believe it after they arrive in the Hungary and they say, okay, I still, because think about that. They left Europe from Greece for enter again in Europe. So, these people, they feel very vulnerable because in Macedonia and in Serbia, they don't have any rights like in Europe. It's different political situation because it's not Europe country. So sometimes they say, what, you know, if you block me in Serbia, what do I do now? 
places was in near a train station. This is, you know, after the train left, the people stay there and sleep there, don't have nothing, and this is three guys try to stay together. Another country I covered uh, during this year was uh, Bulgaria. In Bulgaria, I worked in 2013, and 2014, and 2015. And um, uh, the crisis uh, the arrived in uh, Bulgaria, the refugees crisis arrived for the first time in Bulgaria in November 2013, because um, compared to now are very small number, but uh, Bulgaria is the more poor European country. Uh, and uh, in November, in one month, in November 2013, arrived around 11, 11 million of people. And it was the first time for the Bulgaria to have all these people on the territory, because usually in the, in the, their history have around uh, 3,000 people, 4,000 people, never 11,000 people. 11,000 people in only one month. So what they do to, for help these people, they decide to open an old uh, uh, military building and uh, uh, abandon the school and, let, and put all the people inside a close because they can manage the problem, they can make interview, they can offer accommodation and they put these people there and they close inside you know, against all the human rights, you know? And this is, uh, was for a long time. I mean, it's more than one month. And this is, was how the people live there. You know, this is, was a family live like this. This is, was the camp. This is, was a European camp, welcome camp. This is, was a woman lost, uh, her husband, because uh, the husband have a heart attack and the ambulance arrive after 36 hours. And this is have a pray. For. This was abandoned at the school. You know, they opened the school put inside the people. At that time uh, in the school, in this gym, it was like uh, 800 people and uh, 390 was a child around. So can you imagine abandoning the school, abandoning the gym, you know, just two bathroom, two shower don't work, and it was a child. So, but you can understand the difference from uh, us and them. We give the gym and they clean everything try to have their space, their intimacy. They put some chairs outside for our communication. So big sense of um, uh, civic, you know, very, very fantastic people, I mean. After what's happened, um, was a big scandal for Europe, no? Because before 2050, Europe, uh, when, when I saw some country, you know, because for the Dublin reglamentation, you know, the, the, the country can do alone, they have the responsibility to do alone the problem, you know, to fix the problem of these people, to, to give asylum, to take care of these people. So when the Europe saw the situation in Bulgaria, say, hey, what, what are you doing? This is unacceptable. So Bulgaria say, okay, but if you want, I do something best for these people, I need money, because I don't have money. So the Europe give like uh, six uh, million, uh, six, six, six million of dollar. And they decide to back in Bulgaria for understand how they spend this money, which is the program, how they can want to improve the situation. And the what they learn that they just spend the money for building a wall and uh, um, building a ghetto, no integration, no school, nothing. So the problem disappear, you know, like, okay, <laughs> thank you for the money. And now we try to kick out the people, to block the people, to stop the route, and uh, let's see. This was an uh, in, um, infrared camera. 
in the border. This is what's controlling the track because of how we saw in, the, in another chapter the people try to enter inside the, the track for continuing the journey. This is what's in the office. The people was waiting for a registration. This is was um, a guy from Afghanistan, 20 years old. He had an interesting story because uh, he lived for five years in England and arrived at the age of 14 alone in England. He got asylum. During this year, he became a Christian, Catholic. And uh, for this reason, he had to uh, have this tattoo. And, uh, but what's happened that when, when, when he, he did 18, England decided to don't renew the protection. So he sent back to uh, Afghanistan. But in Afghanistan, he lost, all, he lost the contact with the, his culture. So um, he forgot about Ramadan and he was eat something during the month of Ramadan, and the police arrested because uh, they believed it was a provocation against uh, the religion. And the one newspaper uh, made article of this guy like, uh, 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 they, they back from Euro, Europe uh, um, um, without any faith, you know? The, and he was uh, scared because have a fear the Taliban became a target of Taliban. So the relatives helped to left again the country and now and he arrived in, in the Bulgaria. And um, this is another part, you know, this is room before was from Syrian people during the, the, the crisis when these 11,000 people arrived in Bulgaria and they don't have any space. And when the Europe give them money, they move out the, the, the Syrian people and try to find a better uh, condition, you know, to have a room. But they say, okay, but for African people, could, could, this is okay. So African people can stay. So African people don't need the room. They can stay all together, you know? And some people come from Mali, and Mali also was a war at that time. This is the food, uh, this is always, um, a center for an accompanied minors, was all uh, minors from 15 years to 70 years, and some vulnerable people. And this is was the distribution, uh, what the center uh, provide, some food, and what you saw in the picture. You remember the picture with the, the tent? before, during the in November, after Norway uh, donated some container and some people, uh, they move in the container. But also what's happened, when they start to um, fix the, the asylum uh, office, the, the asylum system, um, if you get the paper, you need to leave the camp. But some people don't have any, don't have money, and don't have other space uh, for sleep, and they finish to sleep uh, outside in the street, because okay, I have asylum. You know, Bulgaria say okay for three years, five years, depend from the case. You can stay. No people uh, deport you, but you need to leave the camp, and they don't have any second step for these people. You know, so provide for yourself. Now you have your document. You can stay in Bulgaria. Good luck. And some people finish to sleep in the street. This is a container. He was a picture of... Um, he was tortured from Taliban when he was um, two years uh, old. Because he, the Taliban killed the father and uh, was tortured with some cigarette. This is also... Um, the, the military building that they open and they start to, you know, with the money, they start to fix and it became like a ghetto because it can give hospitality like 5,000 people. So it's, and this is, was like a, a around 10 kilometers from the Turkish border. So the idea was, okay, we fix this, this camp and they stay there in the border, in the corner of Bulgaria. We put all the people there, 5,000 people there. You can see different building, and also 
all the camp was um, uh, controlled from um, military office, so they have very military system. So one building from family, one building only for uh, men, one building only for the woman. He was victim of uh, Razzis attack um, too. He is in the camp for vulnerable case. He was uh, pushing the bridge and he crashed the leg. It was a big solidarity for this guy. The people, uh, some Bulgarian volunteers collect money for the operation because it was very, very expensive. And he still, after two years, he sti still have a problem to work. It was Mansur. He also, he was from um, Senegal, so don't have any chance to get uh, asylum or refugees because uh, he was uh, um, economic migrants for Europe. So they refuse the, the application and also have a terrible story. And uh, he lived in an abandoned building alone just with dog. But now he's in Germany, but also in Germany they refused the, the request. He wrote me around uh, three days ago for asking me to find a lawyer in Italy. So he tried to go in an old country to, to have a chance. This is a child uh, play. They are from Syria. They are brother. The brother put on the shoulder and crossed the border because um, uh, he was wounded in, uh, during the Syrian war. He lost uh, the capacity to, to work. And this is uh, the fantastic wall uh, we pay, European pay, for uh, stop these people, you know? Uh, here we are in front of Libya. This is... Um, I was uh, in November uh, with the Doctor Without Border. I have, um, and still they have, they start again in May, this uh, search and rescue operation in the Mediterranean Sea for rescue the people, uh, you know, try to make this disparate uh, journey. This is one of the most dangerous uh, way, the Mediterranean, because it's scary. And this is, was uh, a boat with around, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, it was like 93 people from Nigeria and around 40 women inside. They go, they, they go to rescue them. The doctor without border, I need to say that uh, do a fantastic job with these people, and they show you why. Uh, how you can see, they have very human attitude, you know? They touch the people, no gun, no military, help the people, embrace the people, try the people. If you go to military boat in the same rescue, you know, they embrace the people, they are very welcome. You know, the first day too is to embrace the people, kiss the people, and try to give uh, another feeling of Europe. Because the another uh, rescue operation, was, uh, sometimes it's from uh, military side, so it's completely different. Stay down, don't move, show me the hand, you know. Don't touch me, stay far, I have a gun, it's completely different. I don't judgment, you know, but I think that this is very important, you know, to have another approach. Welcome, you know, they are amazing people. And after in the boat, they explain, and now they have a talking, and they explain, say, now you are in the, in, in the humanitarian boat, and please have a collaboration, stay quiet. We go in Italy, the people became amazing. They start to song, and uh, it's an amazing moment. And this is guy, in this moment, to watch for the first time uh, Europe. They watching, uh, we arrive in Lampedusa, and uh, he, this is uh, the first time I saw Europe. And this is the transport after in the center. But what's happened after? There is another part, there is the landing. In Italy, it's completely different uh, from uh, Greece. There is a control, there is uh, people, and there is the, the police start to identify the people, take a picture, take some document, see, take a name, and 
after there is the um, triage. Do you know what is the triage? Just control if they have a fever. Well, the f first medical uh, screening. It's a first medical screening to see if some people have a serious problem. They need to go in the hospital or something else. You can see the dangerous migrants coming in uh, <laughs> in Italy. Uh, it's very young. And this is uh, um, Pozzallo, the first uh, re reception center, and uh, they became a hotspot. And this is where the people live, how, how they live inside the... Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandro, for this very touching presentation. I have one question, and maybe if people have more questions, but I have one question. Uh, what can we do now? I mean, the, the most uh, explanatory picture was for me apart from everything, the wall that was built with our money. So how can we help? Very, you know, briefly. I know that there are no solutions probably, but thank you for... No, thank you, thank you to you. I think that um, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very important, um, it's, it's hard to, to replay this question, you know, because there is any, um, magic uh, solution because unfortunately the Europe is it's a lot of country fight together you know they, they, they show the mask but it's very important I think that the, um, to think about when we vote the people and um, and the, 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 the life of every day, I mean, because these people are, are after they, they share the territory with us, so more concept it's, it's it's, um, it's, it's, it's very important to, to make the correct decision every day. Every day is the correct decision every day. Don't forget. And um, to protest, I mean, it's also to protest. I was very surprised in October for the first time, and when I go in the Highland, I saw a lot of volunteers. Young people, people go there and decide that they want to do something. And I think that this is one of the ways where they can people, what, what you can do. You help these people and say, okay, uh, my government uh, don't want to do nothing for you, but I'm, I'm citizen of this country, so I can do something. It's not dangerous, so to take, um, uh, take some responsibility, I think this is important. And uh, so in your small part, do, do some action. Uh, for example, I remember um, when Hungary started to close the border, before to start to close the border, you know, they, in the August they say, we start to building the border and the 15th September we close. And from now, from now, it's forbidden to help refugees. You can offer, uh, you can move in the car, you can uh, pick up, you can do nothing. But people from uh, Austria, this, uh, they decide to, you know, with some action in Facebook, to collect uh, car and people, and I don't remember how many cars, but probably 40 or 15 cars move from Austria to Hungary to take, bring people, and they move in Austria. And this is, I think, it's a big signal also from the politics, because we, it's a political game, so we need to fight with uh, the government. You know, it's us decision, I mean. While you're working on the project, you're obviously very involved with the people, but do you also, Matt, like, uh, is there any form of contact that's continued afterwards too, or? Oh, a lot, a lot. I, I am in contact with a lot of people. Um, for example, uh, the family, the Cali family with the, the handicapped um, child, they, they wrote me, when they arrived with them, they wrote me and they asked me for the picture and, um, 
Mansur from Senegal asked me from a lawyer with some people who still are a friend. Uh, fortunately, some people now have a good life. Some people are still blocked. There are different stories because, um, unfortunately, some countries are better. For example, Germany, for an accompanied minors, uh, try to have integration. They offer a school, but in France, nothing happened. And some people continue to to travel for a ride. So yes, I have. I still in contact. I mean, we are uh, all human. So when I go, uh, when I spend time with these people, uh, uh, with a lot of them, uh, after there is some connection, you know, they chat me to to stay together and try to tell them story. They they know what's happened. They know which is my rule, and. Um, and so uh, there is a respect in the both sides. And after, there is the human side. So sometimes um, just you became friend. You know, with some people are still in, uh, in Facebook, uh, we chat, and uh, we have a news. I remember, uh, this is happening one month ago. One guy I met in Greece in 2012 that they lived in this abandoned uh, building in, uh, in uh, Patras. At the end, he arrived in Germany. Now he have a family, and the last months, for the first time, he have the chance to have um, because after two three years he work, he have a passport, you know. So he decided to make the travel uh, again, you know. So he go in uh, Padra and uh, Morocco and in Italy and uh, and back in Germany, and we met in Italy after three years, you know, and say say after all this. Uh, after all this time, uh, I miss something and uh, decided that the, my, my first travel was to look, look me back, to, 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 to see how it was hard to conquer what I have. And there was one of these people he wanted to meet. It was uh, fantastic for me, you know, it was, uh, it was great to, to, do, to have this contact with these people. Um, I assume that there was a language barrier with a lot of the refugees in you, so um, I'm just wondering how you communicated with them on such an intimate level. With my wonderful English. Uh, oh, and did they, were they, like, were no, they sometimes, responsive? Sometimes I use a uh, translator. Mm -hmm. For example, for the Cali family, no people speak in English, so I ask a um, translator from uh, Doctor Without Borders, from Arabic, and um, uh, with Afghanistan, a lot of them speak a fantastic English, so you don't have any problem. Sometimes just to use, I ask help of some um, some people I found, you know, another refugees to can translate for me. But of, of course, I you don't take the picture everybody, you know. And um, and me personally, I need to to have some contact to. to to have some connection with the people empathy. So I follow a lot of people, uh, we have a chance to communicate, so speak in English. But a lot of people speak in English, a lot of them. Or oh, friends. From Africa, a lot of them speak a very good friends. But it's very easy. It's very easy to to have a contact with these people. Eh? Very easy. I mean, you know, it's um, nothing, nothing to, to complicate, you know. Uh, just sometimes they are scared because they don't know you and say, what to do this man, this big man with the beer, come here, want to take a picture of us, what, what, what he wants, you know. But after when you explain, take a time, and, um, and some people are very happy to share their story, you know, because uh, they, they are not shame, you know, they are refugees, they want to do the best for their life, so, it's not hard. You can try. Yeah. It's uh, the same system. So, like if you go around and you want to meet people, you need to use the same attitude to go there, present yourself. Hello, my name is this. I come here for the reason. This is my job. We can spend time together. Sometimes you find people say no because they are tired. <coughs> you need to respect. But they are, almost the time, the people are uh, happy, enjoy to don't stay alone, and uh, 
have the chance also to have information because a big problem I found in this story that a lot of the time some people are completely alone that don't know nothing what's happened. Sometimes I arrive in Lisbon, the people tell me, can you tell me where is Athens? Oh my God, you know, you are in the island. You need to, you have a long journey in front of you before to go Athens, you know, because sometimes, you know, they are manipulated from a smuggler or something, so they believe to, to go in one place, they go in another place, or they arrive in Idomen and they believe the border is open. I don't find any people there that explain, look, the border is closed, don't trust anybody because it's dangerous. I don't know if you saw two, three months ago this picture of the people cross the river. You saw in newspaper or on TV, it was this moment people crossing the river. This is, was a big, big mistake big scandal because some people, I don't know why, give a, a wrong information on the refugees, start to give some flyer with, hey, the border here is closed, but if you work there one kilometer and after you turn right, you arrive uh, in Macedonia. You know, so all people take their bags and start to follow to this information. Three people die. 1,000 people was arrested and they pushed back to Macedonia because just some people, uh, you know, because they don't know nothing, you know. So um, if you found people like you that just want to talk and maybe for them it's also a big chance because say, ah, finally, one woman want to talk with me, probably I can ask something what's happening here. It's great. Thank you. Thank you to you. Thank you.